Hi, my name is Bill Bradley. I'm an extreme endurance athlete, and this is my video newsletter. The topic of today's newsletter is do it for yourself. This, what I'm going to be talking about is a bike race, but this could be about anything in, in life. You know, you want to do things for yourself. You don't always, there's not always going to be fans there. There's not going to always be people cheering. You've got to, you've got to learn to do things for yourself, the satisfaction of doing it for yourself. Let me, let me explain my race. So with Furnace Creek 508, I got into the Furnace Creek 508. It's a really, really difficult 508 mile bike race through Death Valley. 36,000 feet of climbing. I remember we started out, it was really windy. On top of climbing all these hills, you got all this wind. I, anyway, I, everything went pretty good. And I remember I was coming down, I was getting, I was a couple hours from the finish. I remember I was riding my bike and the, the cutoff, I, I was so tired that I was starting to fall asleep on my bike. But my team did not want me to get off the bike anymore because we were so close to missing the 48-hour cutoff. I'd had one and a half hours sleep over the last two days. I'd been on the bike seat the whole time. And I was sitting there and I was nodding off. I mean, I was sitting on the bike and they were behind me. So my crew's behind me at night. And they're shining their headlamps up on you. So you got their headlamps, you know, kind of showing you the road and your headlamp. And then, and so I'm sitting there and, and this is how they explained it to me before, I, later, was that I was sitting there and I'm riding that bike because I'm thinking, I got to make it. 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 And I'm sitting there and I'm going like this. They said, this is how I was going. They're going, woo. They're watching me from behind me. Woo. I'm weaving. And then it kept getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And finally, they pulled up next to me, right? And what they told me is they didn't want to honk their horn because they thought that I would, they would startle me, right? And so they pulled up and they looked in the... And, and, and the guys, my crew, is they're looking out the window at me, and they're screaming at me, wake up, Bill, wake up, wake up, wake up. And I finally go, and they said, they said later that my eyes were open, but nobody was home. But I still had to keep riding the bike, even though they woke me up. I think I got off the bike for like five minutes after that, because we were so worried about the cutoff. We didn't know exactly where the finish line was. And so I got back on the bike now, and I'm so... So tired and so delirious, and I'm coming down. I got you know, I'm the, the last hour or so to go, and, and I'm thinking, like, I'm starting to see stuff. You know, it's like four in the morning, and I'm starting to see, like, I, I start thinking, I'm hearing the crowd cheering, and I'm hearing and I'm looking at these. I'm th I think I'm seeing fans along the, along the side of the road, you know, because it's like so pitch black, and I'm thinking, like, yes. There should be fans out here. This is great. I had done numerous marathons and, and, and Ironmans and triathlons and big, you know, they have big crowds at the end of those. And I was thinking like, yes, people realize how hard this is. And so they're out here cheering for us. And they're che and I and I yeah, and I was so appreciative. But then every time I'd get close to where I thought I heard and saw these clearing crowd, I would shine my headlamp and I'd go, oh, just a bush. And then I'd look up further and go, oh, there they are. There's that crowd I've been seeing. And then I'd go, and then they go, I'd get up close and I'd go, oh, another bush. And I'm just struggling to stay on that bike. I'm doing everything I can to stay on that bike to make this cutoff. I, I'm doing this for my team, for myself. I've been, you know, too much I put into it. I can't miss the cutoff. And then I remember I finally came up to the straightaway to finish. And then I looked, and I was coherent by now, right? And I look, and there's two people at the finish line. There's nobody else. Zero. 5.30 in the morning. There's nobody there. The race director and a kid. And they pulled a piece of tape, a piece of tape thing across the finish line. And I went through it. That's when I realized, welcome to the ultra world, Bill. You do this for yourself, for your team, but mostly you do it for yourself. You've been out there, you pushed it for 48 hours or 46 and a half hours, and you finished the toughest 48 hours in sports. Only 44 people would finish that year at a 78. And I was one of them. Second to last, but one of them. And, uh, and, but I realized then that in this, that you are doing it for yourself. There's no fanfare. There's no fame. You're just, you come across that line and you're done. 
and you realize, but it's the greatest feeling in the world because of what you had accomplished and how much it means to you. It just meant so much to me that I was able to do that race. And so that's what, yeah, so it's, it's all about. So whatever you're doing in life, you know, if you're doing anything, you know, not, not just sports, but anything that you feel really proud about, don't worry if nobody else notices or anything. Just know that you did it for yourself. And that brings you inner confidence and inner joy. Anyway, thank you very much. If you're interested, you can follow me on Facebook or Twitter. You can email me questions. Give me a couple weeks to get back to you. And then also, you can give me, you know, send me an email if you're interested in me talking to your group, your company, your team. Anyway, I'd love to do that. Uh, send that also to epicbillbradley at gmail.com and we will send you information. Thank you very much.